Right, so, uh, about two weeks ago, as of this going up, I made a video talking about the Avatar live-action series, and I mentioned that I might rewatch the original cartoon that came out when I was a, a very, very young lad. Um, in fact, I didn't even realize that the show came out in 2005 and finished in 2007. Like, holy fuck. I didn't realize it was that old. Like, I was finished 17 years ago, bro. 17 years! I was five years old when um, Avatar The Last Airbender would have finished. That's um, quite the thing to think about. Um, really, isn't it? Absolutely ridiculous. Um, also, if you're wondering why I'm wearing a hoodie for some reason, it's because I'm not wearing a shirt underneath. Now, no more questions. Um, and I did. I rewatched watched um, Avatar The Last Airbender, the original cartoon series. Was it as good as I remembered from my childhood? Well... If you saw the tweet I put out last week, as of this going up, um, I don't know, because I don't remember much of it from my childhood. I don't remember what I thought about it from back when I watched it. Uh, so, I can't really tell you if it was as good as I remember, because I don't remember. But was it good? Oh, oh, absolutely. It was a really enjoyable experience. It was a really nice journey. Start to finish, it was really, really good. There are things in it that I think um, were incredibly good for its time. Also, I've just realized, let me adjust the camera a touch, the webcam screen, just a touch. You probably won't notice that. Maybe you will. If you did, you get four points. And what can you do with this points? I don't know, nothing right now. Maybe you'll be able to train for a high five one day. <laughs> yeah, you have four points. Anyway, um, so what was I saying? Oh, yes. The all around the whole journey from beginning to end, from book one, water to book three, fire, it's a brilliant story. It's really well done, it's really well organized, it's really well put together. Do I think it's the greatest piece of writing to ever come out? No. But, for its time, and for what it was, for a kid's show, it's really good. Pretty enjoyable. Even watching it now as an adult, it was nostalgic, for one. Um, it's, you know, enjoyable. I got to re-experience a part of my childhood, which was very, very nice. Um... But even outside of that, of being, you know, a nostalgia thing, it was really enjoyable. I enjoyed watching it. I've not really told you why, have I? I've just blabbed on it. It's, it's enjoyable. I enjoyed it. Um, especially compared to the fucking live action. And I did watch from the very beginning. I didn't skip to um, the Earth season, which I'll just, you know, hop between calling it season one, season two, season three, book one, book two, book three, Earth, wind, air, fire, water, cheese, balance, well, not watch Korra yet, so no balance. Although I will um, eventually get around to watching Korra, probably after I record this, uh, realistically speaking, and that's probably when I'm going to do it. But yes, we will watch Korra, and I will reluctantly sit through it all and make a video on it, probably, when I finish. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Avatar The Last Airbender. Let's start at the beginning. Book one, Water. In my opinion, a little bit slow. Just a touch slow. I do like that there's a nice bit of world building. You know, you get some nice stuff. But some of it feels a little bit superfluous. A little bit dragged on for just a bit too long. I get it. They've got to explain a lot. Because it's, you know, it's the introduction. It's starting the series. You've got to explain bending. You've got to explain um, why things are the way they are. The state of the world. The nations. Etc. Etc. The spirit world for one as well. There's a lot you've got to introduce. So I understand the, you know, there's a lot to do in this what is, I think, the shortest season, if I remember. I think it is the shortest. It's 20 episodes. And I think Earth is 21 and Fire is 21. I think? Or is Earth 19? I think Earth's actually short. I, whatever. But what it feels like the pacing's a little bit too slow. I think some bits of the, like, quote-unquote filler, the, the uh, world building, it has a purpose. It's not actually filler, but... Some of the world building segments could have been uh, sped up a little bit, I think. There's just, and some of it isn't particularly relevant. It's nice, but it's not particularly relevant. Again, it's quaint, but when you try, when you binge on the whole thing, and then none of it's relevant. When you watch an episode that basically nothing relevant happens in, it, it, it's so so. Any particular points from War Season? That I have to make. Not particularly. Not, there will be some story beats that we'll pick up on generally, but we'll get to that after I've covered my general opinions of each 
season. This is non-scripted, as everything I do is. So if this feels really, really rambly and none of it makes any sense, that's why. So, yeah, bear that in mind. Um, Book Earth. The Earth season. Season 2, where Toph is introduced. I enjoy Toph. She's fun. Um, the pacing's better. I will say. Um, passing say, really cool. Um, I do think... Yeah, passing say is pretty well handled, uh, pacing-wise. It's also really good that it ties back into earlier arcs. We get uh, Jet and the gang come back in the Earth season. Uh, oh, there's other stuff that comes back in the Earth season. I, I watched it all over the span of, like, a week, so... I feel like my memory should be fresh, but then... <laughs> you know, you know, you can got a lot going on! <laughs> Fuck's sake. But yeah, Earth season, solid. Like a rock. We actually get to see more of the learning process as well for Aang learning earthbending as opposed to with learning waterbending from Katara. That, it, you see some of it, but it's a lot more um, condensed, I think, I feel. Which makes sense because water is a lot easier for Aang to learn because it's not. But Earth is the opposite to wind. So, obviously, airbending, sorry. It was harder for him to learn earthbending as opposed to the others. It's even said in the show. And firebending is obviously afraid of. So, but those two taking him longer makes sense. And water is, you know, it's not too dissimilar to earth. And also, he's not got earth, air. And he's not got um, any opposition to it either. So, makes sense why it's a lot more spread out. And you do see Ang struggle with it, which I quite like. Um, it's also here where we start to see some of, see some of Ang's internal struggles. We see him like fracture a little bit especially when Arpa gets kidnapped like he, the instability the fact he's young he's a kid and that's one thing I think the real show does is it really does make Aang seem young he's inexperienced he's immature he's he's a child he's like 12 years old right like and this kid's had loads of responsibility just thrust on top onto him you know and also all the guilt of having you know, run away from his people albeit if he hadn't he would have died so it's him running away was the correct decision, but you can understand why he'd feel guilty having done so. And by the end of our season, we also get, um, I believe this is right at the end of our season, is when, yes it is, because they go back to Ba Sing Se right at the end, and then they fly on out on Arpa, um, because they get Arpa back at the end. Or is it right at the start of fire? No, it's at the, it's the end of our, it blends together. My pop filter. It blends together a little bit at the, uh, <laughs> for the end of Earth and start of fire for me, but Yes, you, Toph just invents earth bend, uh, metal bending. She just does it. She just learns it. Also, one thing I said in the video about the live action is with Katara just magic, you know, just out of nowhere, freezing water. Well, uh, it's kind of just the same in the show. She just does it. What benders kind of just can. No fair. I, I guess me co co complaining about that was uh, baseless. But yes. Also, Earth Season, we get a lot of film for Zuko as well as a character. He goes from being, you know, just angry, angry, shouty man to, well, not just angry, angry, shouty man. That's a unfair judgment of his character. To having a lot more nuance. You see him fleshed out in his relationship with Iroh and sort of the conflicts there and him having his little journey of self-discovery, which at the end he does make what is an incorrect choice. However, it is all a part of his destiny. If he hadn't done that, well, then things would probably have gone very differently in the Earth's, in the fire season, because they wouldn't have known about Ozai's, you know, plan to use the airships to scorch the Earth. So, yeah, his destiny is, you know, a big part, destiny and honor are a big part of Zuko's character, and, you know, how he comes to terms with not somebody else that determines your honor, it is you, you claim it. You reclaim it. Your actions that determine your honor and stuff. You know, destiny being a big part of him is him being um both Sozin and Roku's grandson is really cool. It and him and Azula being sisters, both being descendants of both these people, show the duality of you know you've got the great evil of the Fire Lord Sozin and the great good of Avatar Roku, and you know how they've got equal opportunities to be both evil and good with Zuko um, betraying both aspects of it with the Zula. Uh, yeah. We'll talk about her, because I actually quite like her character arc and how it comes to a conclusion. But anyway, Book Fire. Where shit gets real. All the stuff in the Fire Nation I actually think is really interesting. I do think the third season is the best, in my opinion. 
uh, that's just me, but it's also the freshest in my mind. So that might be why. Um, but I really enjoy um, Book 3 Fire. It's really, really interesting. Um, I love all the stuff going on in the Fire Nation. You finally get to see the Fire Nation proper. You, know, you don't get to see like random firebenders, um, like that one guy. I can't remember his name. Jong Jong? Yes, that's it. Who fled, you know, the, the runaway, or I think that's what he was called. But yeah, him, you get to see him. And, not, well, not him, but you get to see, you know, Fire Nation people other than firebenders, normal people. And it really kind of humanizes the rest of the Fire Nation. You know, not in a in your face of, oh, look, see, not all Fire Nation people are evil, but in a way that's just natural. It shows you these people doing normal things and living lives as is normal. And, you know, it's, it's not a big deal that there are normal people in the Fire Nation. Makes sense. Of course there are. That's really cool. I really love the stuff that goes on in the Fire Nation. You know, the disguises, how it's been, you know, a handful of weeks since... Ang has been KO'd by Azula from the end of the Earth season. Very good stuff. And also, Zuko's character arc coming to an end with him joining Team Avatar in his awkward fashion because he is not a people person. Seems like no one in um, that family is, because Azula certainly isn't. Um, him coming to terms with everything and joining Ang, teaching him firebending, then finding out about the, you know, there are dragons still alive. The original firebender so there's you know fire there's an, an animal is the original bender of each thing you have the sky bisons for the air nomads you have the dragons for the fire nation you have uh, the badger moles for earth i can't remember what the water tribes ones are you let me know in the comments you right now tell me anyway <laughs> Um, yeah, really cool stuff. I haven't really touched on the Spirit World stuff. It, it, it happens. It's neat. But, you know, it's not a big deal. Kind of. Kind of is. There's a little tidbits of stuff that come back later, like Ko, well, the Face Stealer. Um, although, no when And there's obviously the stuff with the Forest Spirit as well. Uh, anything else happens in the Spirit? There's some other stuff. I, it's a bit vague um, in my head. But, yes. Spirit World stuff, I feel like it's touched on. It's kind of relevant, but it needs a bit more fleshing out. And I'm aware that this happens in Korra. Everyone I've heard it isn't done very well. But we'll see when I get there. I'm not going to make any judgments yet. Um, but yes. Book Fire. Really nice. Obviously, you get these, the big conclusion. You know, Aang versus Ozai. The big fight between the Avatar and the Fire Lord. Pretty cool fight, but I don't think it's actually the highlight fight of the season for me. I prefer Azula versus Zuko and Katara. Now, Katara's presence, yes, it matters. However, if she wasn't there, the fight would have been different enough and I think Zuko still would have won. Because the reason Zuko isn't able to finish the fight is because he gets incapacitated because he takes a, a strike of lightning for Katara. But if Katara wasn't there, Azula wouldn't have been able to do it, so, you know, it would have been a very different scene. And Zuko probably would have been able to, you know, if like, oh, as they might not even use lightning. But hey, beside the point. I really like that fight. I really enjoy it. I think it's really cool. Really neat. Seeing the clashing of blue flame. Like, I really like Azula. I think she's a really interesting character. Because she's just fucked. She's so psycho. She rules by fear. She gains people's trust through fear. People follow her because they are afraid of her. And this is her ultimately her downfall. She doesn't have anyone that she can trust or rely on or confide in, which really starts to show when she unravels at the end of the fire seasons, particularly after Mei and Tai Lee betray her in the Boiling Rock. So I think that's the big moment where, you know, it clicks for her and she realizes that there isn't a single person she can genuinely trust. Because if all she has over them is fear, as soon as they feel something that outweighs that fear she induces... They have no loyalty. And it starts to make her incredibly, incredibly paranoid. To the point where she starts fucking seeing shit and being schizo with, you know, hearing her mother talk to her. But she loses it. And it's really good. She has a full-on breakdown, a full villainous breakdown that I think is really conducive to her character arc. Not that she has a huge one. She's psycho bitch and ends in psychoa bitch, right? 
But the way it's handled is very, very good. I really like the writing on that. Speaking of writing, um, there's one thing I want to talk about. The recap episode. The Ember Island Players episode. That is how a recap should be handled. Because first of all, it's slightly satirical. You know, it pokes fun at some of the events that have happened along the way and slightly misconstrues them as well. But it jogs your memory on the things that have happened. At least core events that have happened. But it also adds you know, new stuff. You get to see you know, slight little conflicts between the characters. Little bits here and there. You see a little bit of dialogue that you wouldn't have seen otherwise if it had just gone straight into the Sozin's Comets uh, stuff in me that's immediately after it. That's how you should handle a recap. Not just go, here's scenes. Watch them again. There you go. Right? It was done in a tasteful manner. Also, what I really like with, uh, is when Aang comes back in, he's missed a little bit, and Saka just goes, so what you missed is here, this, 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 and this. And it's like, yep, you saw these events not too long ago, so you don't really need them refreshed in your mind, do you? Oh, look, they're fighting the Fire Lord now. Have fun, right? I do very much um, think that that's how a recap episode should be handled. Speaking of which, other tropes... I, a recap episode isn't really a trope. But other things that Avatar does really well that on shows, be it anime or not anime, the things that it does well that on stuff does not. Redemption arcs. Well, sometimes I've done well, but Zuko's redemption arc is actually really well handled. You see his growth from right at the beginning, where he's a bad guy, to Earth season where he's conflicted and then makes a poor decision. And then Fire season where he... You know, begins to understand himself, what he's supposed to do with his life. In a similar way to how Iroh does with him, you know, having this vision of him sieging and taking down Ba Sing Se, but realizing that it's not actually taking it in the name of the Fire Nation, but liberating it, sieging it to liberate it. His vision came true, but his role was not what he thought it was. His destiny wasn't what he intended it to be. Destiny is also a kind of a, it's not a huge thing, but it is mentioned throughout. I do think it's kind of important and poignant to acknowledge, specifically with characters like Zuko, Iroh, Aang. Uh, yeah, mainly those three. But it's very um, well put together, the little, little, little subtext of destiny that's weaved in. As for the one thing I think it does well, but I feel it was a little bit unnecessary, is the romance elements. Like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Characters like Sokka and Zuko make sense, you know, they're teenagers. They're going to be hormonal. Ang's 12 and a monk. Like, yeah, I get it. Sure, it makes sense he'd have some urges, but like, really? Would really, he really be that damn bad? I don't think so. Um, Saka makes sense. He's a... Where's a fuckboy without him realizing it, man? Like, he just, he, he just is. He locked in. That's how it be. And Zuko, uh, his isn't much. Although he does have like this weird kind almost romance subplot with Katara going on that amounts to basically nothing because obviously he betrays her trust. But then it, she he regains it, you know, when they do the little thing where Katara goes and finds the man that killed her mother. Very, very nice. Also, one thing that I'd actually ask my friends about because I didn't even notice is that when she is doing that scene, I thought it wasn't a full moon when she bloodbends. I was like, wait, hold on. Doesn't, I don't, but apparently it is and I just missed it. So yeah, there's that. Um, So no plot hole there. Good writing. Isn't that crazy? Consistent writing that holds up and doesn't fall apart. <sighs> good stuff. All around, good stuff. I enjoy it. Oh, that was very nice. A couple of things I probably haven't touched on in this video. If you'd like to know my thoughts on something that I haven't mentioned or you think I could elaborate or clarify on further, well, let me know in the comments. Also, like and subscribe as well. That'd be a Really, really appreciate it. If you could do that, I would be very, very grateful. Thank you very much. And anyway, we'll leave that there. I've been Animal City. You've been you. And I hope to catch you all next time for another video. Ta-ta-ta. Bye now.